बुद्धिर्बल यशोधर्यम निर्भयमोगिता राड्यम वाक्पुटुत्च मत्स्मरणा भवे ओ श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ नमस्ते टुडे एल बी टाकिंग एल बी प्रेजेंटिंग मै ऐडिया अबउट संस्कार संस्कार आर द हिंदू वे ऑफ सेल्फ कल्टिवेशन नो मेनी पीपल थिंक दट संस्कार आर कंप्लीटली यूजलेस दे हैव नो प्लेस इन दिस मॉडर्न वर्ल्ड दे आर एंटिक्वेटेड एंड दे आर Uh, out of fashion i'll go i'll argue that this is not the case now uh, here's my abstract uh, well sculpted abstract but i will not read it now instead i will go ahead and present my thoughts and then maybe i'll read it later now my first claim is that rituals are effective hindu rituals and festivals do affect the psyche of its participants I'll show this with a series of examples, which hopefully touch you through feelings, through the world of feelings, uh, if not uh, using the world uh, through the world of ideas. Consider the ritual of Rakra Bandhan. Now, Rakra Bandhan is a very popular uh, ritual in India. It is carried out every year, where a sister ties a ornamented thread. to the rest of her brother and this thread is called the rakhi and then the sister uh, does uh, an aarti to his uh, to her brother and uh, then applies kumkuma on his forehead and then she feeds him some sweets and then the brother gives the sister some gifts and along the way he of course explicitly promises that uh, he is going to if not explicitly it's implicit uh, that he is going to protect uh, his sister no matter what and come to her come to her aid in times of need now imagine what effect this ritual has on the minds of the brother and sister especially if they are young what responsibilities do they do they uh, cement do they make concrete what are the feelings of the sister towards her brother and vice versa what expectations of the sister in the brother do they formalize now if you consider all this it's uh, it's very clear at least to me that the ritual of raksha bandhan is effective and the effect is positive it leads to a happier family and a happier society now what uh, what if these participants actually are uh, whole heartedly involved in this uh, ritual now some people such as i in the past have thought of this ritual as a way of extorting gifts and money by the sister now the sister comes and gives you a rakhi and takes away your uh savings if this is the mindset of the brother and the sister uh, or the sister then it is not an effective ritual the ritual loses its effect however if the participants are participating in this ritual wholeheartedly then it is safe to say that the ritual of rakra bandhan is indeed very 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 effective also note that uh, whatever effect this ritual has it's not it's not uh, something that changes the body or it's not something that changes uh, the intellect it is something that affects feelings now it's important to distinguish feelings from thoughts and the body rituals are almost always about feelings now let's take some other examples consider the ceremony of upanayanam upanayanam is where a brahman boy is initiated into the study of vedas it is like a school admission and after this point when he is invested with the sacred thread or the yajna pavita he is expected to perform the twilight ritual of sandhya vandanam where uh, he is expected to chant a long series of sanskrit mantras and he is expected to uh, pay daily oblations to the fire 
the sacred fire and to the gods through the fire and every year at least every year uh, the boy changes his yajnopavita and promises to continue studying the vedas now please consider what the effect of this ritual is on this child from this point on he is expected to behave in a certain different way this is made explicit during the ceremony he is expected to wear a yajnopavita so he is always reminded of his new social context and what the society expects of him so even in this case especially if the uh, participant the main participant that is the boy is participating wholeheartedly the ritual of upanayana is effective and it is still effective to a lesser extent if uh, uh, the boy is not serious because uh, whether or not uh, the boy is resisting the ritual uh, there is still some effect of uh, whatever he performs on his psyche now i uh, take another example a universal example the ritual of marriage this involves uh, with uh, uh, with the witness being fire that marriage of two people the tying of uh, the sacred mangala sutra or a thread uh, by the groom around the neck of the bride and it is clear at this point that uh, s- starting now the uh, the wife the newly wed wife and husband are responsible for each other and they are supposed to take care of each other for the rest of their lives it formalizes their new change of status they have a new context whenever they think about something and this context shift is sort of formalized by this ritual and it's a joyous occasion for many people and uh, this is another very clear example of why rituals are effective now it clearly changes the behavior of the bride and the groom in that they are always conscious that they are married and they can't do certain things uh, they can't even think of certain things because of certain formal obligations which are made explicit during marriage by the things they say now i hope that by these examples of upanayanam uh, marriage vivaha or rakshabandhan that i have illustrated i have uh, shown that hindu rituals are can be effective especially if the participants are there uh, with the right mindset but please don't please don't think that only religious rituals let alone hindu rituals are effective let me present a couple of other uh, non hindu examples consider the ritual of uh, flag hoisting now this is a political ritual a political and partly a military ritual which involves raising a flag now if you have ever attended a very formal flag hoisting ceremony especially uh, by the armed forces here in the united states of america you will observe that you will observe that it's a very intricate and uh, elaborate ceremony it takes like uh, at least a half an hour to raise a flag and even to take down the flag at the end of the day they again spend an half an hour uh, maybe two people come and salute each other uh, salute each other and the flag and unfold the flag and fold the flag and hoist it and salute it and so on so this is a very very elaborate ritual but it inspires the feeling of patriotism in the audience of the flag hoisting ceremony and especially in the people involved in directly handling the flag if you have not attended this ceremony i would uh, strongly urge you to do so 
because it provides a very immediate and a very universal uh, example of an effective ritual. Now, there are also rituals which are aimed at calming your mind. An example is the very elaborate Japanese tea ceremony. Now, the same people who actually appreciate this uh, Japanese tea ceremony, which I also do appreciate, also sometimes thumb their, uh, turn their noses up when it comes to Hindu rituals for whatever reason because somehow the Japanese tea ceremony is a cooler ritual than let's say Upanayanam whereas there is no need, there is no basis for that uh, sentiment. Well, now that we have seen several uh, effective rituals, Hindu and otherwise, religious and otherwise, let us uh, spare a moment to thinking what makes the rituals effective. Now, there are several ex uh, explicit aspects to rituals such as the words you say, uh, the mantras uh, for example uh, in uh, Upanayanam and marriage, what do they mean? Are they just gibberish? Do they mean something? If you understand the man what the mantras mean, what you are saying, does, do they, does it actually enhance your experience and the impact the ritual has on your mind? And then there are the suggestive aspects to rituals. Uh, so, uh, I mainly am inspired by poetry whenever I look at the world. So, I naturally borrow uh, ideas and concepts from aesthetics, literary aesthetics to understand uh, how the world affects our feelings. So, there are suggestive aspects uh, called Dhvani uh, in Kavya Shastra. What is suggested without being explicitly said? Now, the brother need not promise to protect his sister whenever uh, she ties him a rakhi, but it is implicit. It is the result of a shared context like Kavisamayas in uh, Kavyas. And uh, the tying of Mangala Sutra, no one actually uh, writes down a contract uh, pre nuptial contract and have uh, have it signed by the bride and groom. No one does that. But all these things are suggested by, uh, by the shared context and by uh, the sheer power of uh, association. So, this is how uh, rituals can be effective. Now, let me go to the next section of my talk where I claim that ritual celebrations increase happiness. Now, festivals, Hindu festivals are also rituals, except they are ritual celebrations. So, they are like a uh, annual party. They do again affect the psyche of its, of uh, the participants and they mainly increase the happiness of the people involved. Let me give you again examples. I heavily rely on examples to make my points here. Consider the festival of Diwali. Now, whatever your tensions are before the day of Deepavali, when Deepavali comes, everyone is happy, everyone is bursting crackers. Uh, I hope uh, with not too much pollution atmospheric pollution as a result or sound pollution as a result, but everyone is happy. There is a context switch, there is a change in expectations of what your, uh, what, uh, what is normal and what you are expected to do with your time and so on. It is alright to do nothing and enjoy. So, some of this ha happiness in ritual celebrations comes from the context switch. And then, it also brings uh, Happiness also res results from the exercise of one's artistic and aesthetic instincts. Consider this beautiful mandala and the lamps around it. Isn't it, isn't it uh, a work of art? Now, whenever a person does or uh, experiences a work of art, he is moved, his feelings uh, are, are uh, uh, enlivened and so he experiences 
happiness and increased satisfaction. So, this is again an example, another route by which uh, ritual celebrations increase happiness. And third way uh, in which uh, ritual celebrations increase happiness is because one can be playful in these rituals and uh, one uh, encounters other people and naturally maybe because of the endorphin effect people are happier uh, on these joyous occasions when it's like a big party and you get to uh, experience uh, experience uh, very intimate contact with other people look at the faces of these people who have just participated in holy they are happy so ritual celebrations do increase happiness now having made these two points let me uh, put up some uh, definitions i'll make two important definitions i call this the theory of samskaras which is very important for a practicing hindu let us see why now first my first definition is of is that of a practicing hindu a practicing Hindu is a Hindu who observes Hindu rituals and festivals of his choice with the belief that they make him a happier and a better person embedded in a joyful and thriving community. Now we saw that there are, uh, we saw several rituals and festivals, examples uh, were provided and a uh, practicing Hindu is definitely appreciative of these rituals and festivals because he believes that they make him a happier and a better, better person it's not for nothing it's not because just because his forefathers did it or whatever he uh, actually thinks that these rituals make him a happier and a better person and he actually thinks that he makes uh, these uh, rituals make uh, uh, him harmonious with his family and society so this is my definition of a practicing Hindu. Now, it's easy to uh, deduce from this what the definition of a non-practicing Hindu is. A non-practicing Hindu is the kind of person who turns his face away from uh, ritual and thinks himself superior for that reason and so on. Now, uh, after this definition of uh, what a practicing Hindu is, let us look at uh, the definition of samskaras. Or refinement so or conditioning for uh, another uh, for the need of another term now samskaras I define as rituals and festivals together with their impact on the psyche of the practitioner and his surroundings now as I said uh, all these rituals they impact the uh, mindset the mind and the uh, social contract the person uh, participating in the ritual has with uh, other people so all this effect uh, all these effects on the minds of the participants in a ritual are uh, along with the along with the actual uh, actions involved and the words involved all these things lumped together may be called samskaras and Hindu tradition places a huge emphasis on samskaras and a practicing Hindu is, uh, is considered, the, uh, is considered uh, an important uh, component of a happy society. In that uh, society without uh, practicing Hindus would be less uh, harmonious less positive and so on now let us examine uh, we have just seen how rituals can be effective how they can be positively effective yet some people say that it's all humbug it's a waste uh, it's silly let us see what the reasons are and let us see if we can address their objections in this talk now, consider the Sahridaya precondition. I said that a ritual can be effective. A ritual can be effective if the participants participate in the ritual wholeheartedly and sympathetically. 
but a humbugger is a person uh, let's say uh, in our case a non practicing hindu and uh, not just a non practicing hindu he, he could even be uh, anti hindu even though born hindu but uh, the, the such a person can resist an effect uh, the effects the positive effects of a ritual in the following manner he can say this ritual is silly it is useless he has no time for it and these rituals are evil they perpetuate uh, age old uh, oppression of the classes and so on now by keeping this uh, uh, by keeping such a uh, for the lack of a better better phrase dirty mind a humbugger can keep his uh, bad attitude and not be affected positively by uh, hindu rituals now but uh, these objections are serious and they should be addressed seriously not just dismissed not just uh, dismissed out of hand they are uh, they have a reason for a reason let us take them one by one now uh, regarding the silliness uh, objection this ritual is silly right let me address uh, this objection using the dhvani marga how does one resist being moved by ramayana now suppose imagine you are watching uh, ramayana play being enacted on stage one way to resist being moved by this by this work of art is by saying things like that's not rama that's that's just an actor he's he's no way rama rama is even if he existed he's supposed to be dead and what monkeys can talk this hanuman can talk and he can fly and eagles can talk too this is crazy it can't be these people are nuts they believe an elephant uh, headed god can talk and give gifts and he has a fat stomach and rides on a rat it's all bullshit now uh, these are ways one can uh, see, uh, say that uh, something some story is silly and one can further say that there never was a rama there was not even a kernel of truth in ramayana and it was all made up now i have given this example of ramayana uh, one can uh, resist being moved by uh, watching or hearing the tale of rama uh, rescuing sita from the clutches of evil ravana and so on by having this kind of attitude now this kind of attitude is a natural consequence of rationalism and atheism it need not be uh, one can one need not lose artistic sensitivity just because one appreciates also science and rational thought now uh, people object to rituals for roughly the same reasons uh, in terms of silliness some rituals seem silly i mean what what are you doing in sandhya vandana why why are you talking to imaginary people why are you talking to the sun why are you uh, pray uh, why are you folding your hands and uh, praying to the earth and so on and why are you uh, saluting the directions why are you saluting the clouds and so on it's all bullshit so this is one way of uh, uh, saying that sandhya vandanam for as an example of a ritual is completely useless it is silly it is irrational and so on so just as uh, the person who is unable to appreciate ramayana is not necessarily uh, doing himself a great service i would argue that the, a person objecting to hindu rituals is doing himself a disservice or herself a disservice now let us consider uh, okay uh, so uh, one more point regarding ramayana so uh in this in these cases uh, there is a quote which comes to my mind uh, where uh, balinese hindu when he was repeatedly pestered by a german christian about uh, whether rama really existed whether he really 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 believed that ramayana happened and monkeys flew and so on then 
this is what he said do you want to know whether the story is true or merely whether it occurred right i mean it's not even pertinent or important to the balinese hindu or actually to any hindu fundamentally that rama walked uh, rama ruled ayodhya and so on it does matter to a certain small extent but that's not the main point that's not the uh, sara of this uh, problem uh, of this uh, ramayana story now what a person wants from ramayana is some sort of change in feelings and uh, those change in feelings are good and beneficial irrespective of whether it is a well crafted tale or whether it really happened exactly as was uh, related in ramayana it uh, as long as the the sahridaya takes the story of ramayana seriously it is true it is true as long as sahridaya takes uh, uh, the star wars story to be true for the purpose of enjoyment then it is true uh, it is true for him in that it affects his feelings and it is capable of affecting his feelings and uh, hopefully in a positive way now let us move on to other objections uh, our humbuggers have some may say ah i don't need this refinement um i am good as i am thank you well uh, then i would say that uh, if you think yourself to be a perfect person uh, i'm not so sure but uh, it could be it's possible that some people are extraordinary but what about your what about your children and your family do they need ritual and if if uh, they need samskara should you be denying them uh, the uh, proper samskaras it's like just because you have crossed the river should you be burning all the boats so that other people can't cross the river so uh, one should think twice before uh, totally dissing rituals uh, and their general utility just because one doesn't feel the need for the refinement and a third objection which uh, humbuggers have is that they have no time for refinement it's like they have no time for feeling they have all the time for analysis and earning money and going to uh, uh, just enjoying themselves going to uh, carnivals and so on watching tv everything but they don't have time for feeling to refine their the world of feelings now to such people i should point out that most of life is lived in a sort of default mode when you do something most of the time you're not even thinking about it it uh, just b- happens habitually now what are the defaults what is the way you said defaults or the if, if you don't set defaults your environment will set some for you now rituals are a very good way of manipulating these defaults and making sure that you need you lead a, a sort of a socially and environmentally and culturally responsible life so uh refinement is important enough that you should make time for it more about this there is a very good quote about uh, meditation which i love which is attributed to the zen tradition it says you should sit for you should, you should sit in meditation for 20 minutes every day unless you're too busy then you should sit for an hour i like this sentiment very much because the uh, the very time when you need to refine your feelings when you need to cultivate your feelings when you need to condition yourself is when they are challenged by uh, by the rough shod of daily life now if you were to practice uh, samskaras habitually ritually it would be to your benefit even if you are busy you should make time for it now is, uh, this is why festivals and rituals in the hindu tradition specify when you should make time not when you 
can make time or whatever because they realize that people are busy and they should be told to make time otherwise they just don't do it and next is what about the evil baggage now some people especially the reactionary atheists would consider hindu rituals even though useful may be useful they would consider even though they can make time for it maybe they might consider it uh, as perpetuating evil of the past now i won't go into what they think evil is and whether it is justified and so on but suffice it to say that the hindu dharma and uh, tradition is constantly evolving at no point in time has it been static in uh, dynamism is the core of hinduism and you are very much encouraged to be creative and dynamic the dynamism of the hindu tradition will continue it is self correcting as long as you participate in it you define the tradition uh, which your children have so you can be creative and uh, you can throw away the evil baggage just as uh, be it's been shown in this picture you don't have to throw the baby with the bath water just throw the dirty bath water retain the baby the important things the cultivation of feelings and so on uh, the care for uh, the environment and your uh, society and uh, uh, nature retain that and you can be selective but you should still be sympathetic assume that assume that uh, the people who designed these rituals had something in mind had good intent in mind they were not out there to make you oppress and suppress uh, uh, poor people and uh, so on they wanted a happy society too maybe they were wrong in specifics it's fine but you can change uh, what uh, aspects you want to change but by default please assume that it's not bullshit it is effective it is not uh, uh, simply simple waste of time it's not irrelevant by default assume by default that it is relevant examine it if you find something which needs change change it and then so uh, here uh, uh, i have addressed the objections people have to rituals in common uh, commonly but now some people even though they may think that uh, a ritual is not silly it's not useless they can make time for it and it's not evil there is a question of how much how much time to dedicate towards uh, samskara i would say here that one ought to find his or her balance by herself or himself of course it should be something non zero as uh, i have uh, as i have uh, said earlier because rare is the person who doesn't need who is so perfect that he doesn't need refinement or someone who is like yoda on the on a remote uh, moon no most people are not like that common people do need refinement uh, they do get angry and uh, frustrated and so on and rituals can help them so find something find your balance find um, uh, make sure you get something that is non zero uh, get to a level which is non zero uh, increase it or decrease it as much as you feel is appropriate there is, should always be a balance between conditioning and utilization also when performing the rituals and uh, when deciding how much rituals you need focus on the feelings now if the rituals you do uh, make you more irritable you are doing it wrong if you are like uh, om savitriye om gayatriye namaha it oh take care of that milk uh, you are spilling it etc uh, if you if you are in that mindset if you are performing the rituals which without, without taking care of your feelings then you are doing it wrong the feelings your feelings are the most uh, important target of the fruits of your rituals if you are irritable and if you are uh, completely frustrated you are doing it wrong you should be 
creative and you should change uh, the ritual you're uh, doing you're performing to suit your environment so that you can perform it happily and productively you should uh, be able to uh, see an increase in uh, the feelings of let's say gratefulness the rena pragna responsibility dharma wonder happiness a general evocation of uh, the positive rasas hopefully converging in the shanta rasa so uh, having said all this having argued f- for rituals and against uh, dismissing them and uh, i present you with a choice now the choice here on one hand is have no rituals no refinement be crass as possible be very materialistic just care for your enjoyment uh, break with the past uh, have no time tested defaults don't care about art so much don't care about happiness so much it's uh, happiness will automatically happen so that's that's one choice now another choice is the way of samskaras the hindu way adapt some scars get more happiness be more uh, harmonious with your surroundings and society and family and so on have better cultural memory that is be able to withstand threats you don't have to solve every problem a new people have faced the same problems for millennia they have uh, faced invasions of barbarians they have faced rebellious kids they have faced family breakups and so on and they have designed uh their traditions to fight them and to retain some sort of a cultural memory so here are the two choices and the choice for me is quite obvious the way of the hindu samskaras is what i would say is beneficial for you and me in general now having made the choice uh i would i will leave you with some suggestions for uh, what samskaras to adapt in case you have none i would suggest you to try a variety of some uh, of samskaras but be partial to ones in your own tradition in your own family and try to find the good and bad and ugly things about it and adapt it to your needs to your feelings and uh at the ultimately uh, at the ultimate stage your own experience your own anubhava is the main pramana or the main uh, proof for what uh, for whether ritual is good or bad or not the uh, feeling it generates in a person who does something sincerely is what uh, is what uh, you should go by now some examples of samskaras which you can ab- uh, adapt are the five mahayagnas the pancha mahayagnas with which uh, you uh, remember how grateful you are you remember your debts the, the runas renaf towards the devas uh, the pitras your ancestors the devas you can think of them as spirits uh, of uh, various uh, aspects of nature and feelings and so on so that uh, you can perform devayagnas to uh, be in touch with that and you can perform pitrayagnas to to remember your gratefulness for life which the ancestors gave you the culture they gave you and so on the rishi yagna where you uh, where you show your gratefulness for the sages who produced such works of great beauty such kavyas such great poetry and uh, such insights which uh, you find beneficial to this day then you can produce manushya yagna uh, then you can follow manushya yagna where you uh, try to feed people uh, when uh, or at least save uh, a dollar a day or something so that you can feed people or uh, help people in some way and the bhuta yagna where you remember your uh, obligations for nature which he is which is nurturing you 
the environment you can uh, do something like feed the birds and the beasts or you can save money every day ritualistically uh, in order to care for the environment you can look up all these things online i encourage you to learn some mantras the more you know the better the have variety learn some songs and play with murtis uh, now murtis they are not it's very wrong to call them idols or icons decorative icons or whatever no they are not that they are manifestations of the unmanifest unmanifest feelings are sort of manifested into a thanks to our shared cultural context into something which you can immediately focus on and you can uh, uh, which uh, aid in uh, hacking your feelings and making them better and so on so here are my, these were my suggestions and here i end my talk om tat sat by the way you can find this talk at this url and this is my email address feel free to contact me thanks and bye